Here we go with PNP transistors. I, I use the word transistor, but this applies for sensors and switches and proximity switches and inductive prox or and capacitive proxies. No matter what you're working on, the principle applies. On the PNP side, we're going to call this the sourcing transistor. Remember how in my last video I talked about how NPN transistors were syncing? Well, PNP transistors are sourcing. This is the normal instrumentation that you'll see in the U.S. Almost all instruments and sensors are PNP because the inputs that these sensors hook up to are NPN or syncing. If you remember in my first video, sourcing and syncing work together. They have to work together. If you have a sourcing sensor, you must have a syncing input. If you have a syncing sensor, you must have a sourcing input if we're talking about PLCs. But nevertheless, here we go with this PNP sensor as a sourcing sensor. What that means is that the PNP sources the positive voltage. We have to supply a negative voltage to turn on. What you need is a voltage drop on this base emitter junction right here. So in this sense, this is the base, this is the emitter, and this is the collector. The emitter is always on the side of the with the arrow on it, and the base is always this right here. Sometimes on these transistors, you'll see a circle drawn around also. Doesn't matter, no difference, it's the same thing. It's a bipolar junction transistor. So anyways, what we have to have is this current flow. Remember from conventional current flow, what I talked about in the last video, you have a flow from positive to negative. So on a PNP transistor, the transistor sources the power from this emitter pole, and we have to put the sinking side of it. So we would have to supply a lesser voltage potential here. So we would have to supply this with a negative or with a common if our negative is our common. So what we do is when we give this a negative, we activate it. So in the common industrial world, that would be a zero volts. Once we put zero volts on the base side, we activate the transistor, it turns on. When the transistor turns on, what happens, like I said before, is like an invisible wire connects this collector and this emitter together. So essentially, we provide this positive voltage to this side of the load, and voila, the load turns on. So again, when we activate this transistor, because the transistor is sourcing, we have to sync that source, so we sync it, but the transistor is sourcing, and it sources the voltage potential. This is common in the U.S., because in the U.S., we normally like our loads to be turned on by power. If you go to China, a lot of times they look at NPN transistors because their loads turn on by zero volts. So just look at my little chart here once more. On the output side, once our transistor is active, what happens on the collector side or on the side you connect your load to is that we get 24 volts visible on the collector side. When the transistor is off or inactive, it floats. So the same thing goes for the complementary because a lot of sensors have that complementary option. The complementary side is when the transistor is active, it floats. And when it's inactive, it's 24 volts. I'm going to go back to this drawing here that I have, um, kind of representing it in a more relay logic that more electricians will understand. Right here we have our source and we have our sink. I like the positive and negative in conventional current flow, right here, in order to get this relay to come in, to turn on, we have to put a more negative potential down here, or common in reference to this positive. So once we get this relay to pull in, the switch closes. When the switch closes, positive power is supplied to the positive leg of the load, and the load turns on. When we leave the base disconnected, or we supply it with positive voltage, Either way, when we leave it disconnected, the relay turns off, the switch opens, and the load is off. But as this point right here being the collector, the collector is floating. You always have to remember, an important part about this, and I want to reiterate this as a last point, is that when the transistor is inactive, it doesn't turn it to zero volts. A lot of people get hung up on that. It floats. So if you need zero volts, you have to turn to an NPN sensor or transistor. If you need 24 volts, which is more common for the, the U.S. standard, um, you would use PNP sensors. PNP sensors work directly with NPN inputs. So if you have a PLC that has inputs or syncing inputs, they call it, 
that means you need a sourcing sensor to activate it. A sourcing sensor would be a PNP sensor. Just one more thing to note on the PNP also, I said this also for the NPN video, um, a lot of times if we're talking about proc sensors or inductive switches that most electricians work with, they don't even, if you look at the schematics, they don't even draw this base in there. You'll just see the load side of it. And what you'll see is that this PNP, if you remember, is a sourcing sensor. So what it essentially does is when it's active, it turns this collector point to a source, which would be your positive voltage rail, or in most cases, 24 volts. So what it does is it turns your load, if you need a load that needs 24 volts, and one side of the load is already at a neutral potential or at a negative potential, it turns this point to whatever your positive rail is. As you, If you remember, it connects like an invisible wire from your emitter to your collector. So don't get hung up if you don't see no base drawing. It's because there's um, a, a bunch of electronic circuits actually driving that base to, to activate the transistor. If you guys um, are interested in this, please comment or subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try and make a more advanced video. Um, the video is about transistors. They have a lot of different ways they work. This right here, we're looking at a transistor as a switch. Transistors can also be used as amplifiers. So when you're using them similarly, but a little bit different. Uh, we'll get into that in our next video. Thanks for watching.